Well, the whole show is based around a, a three-piece core band, um, a drummer, keyboard player, and, and guitarist. The, are the principal instruments they play. The drummer does a lot of percussion. Um, the keyboard player has four keyboards, a guitar, a baritone sax as well. The guitarist has guitar, bass, tenor saxophone, uh, soprano saxophone, flute and percussion. Uh, so that makes up the three core players. And then there are guys in the performing ensemble who have um, some skills as well. So it's about 39, 40 inputs coming from stage for a three-piece band, which seems a bit excessive, but they're all multi-instrumentalists and all the keyboards are in stereo and uh, even the guitar rig actually is in stereo, uh, true stereo as well, not just two mics. Um, yeah, there's about 10 channels of RF. Um, I've got a, a laptop out front which does sound effects and cues and stuff like that. Uh, it's basically 47 inputs being used in the show plus a shout mic for the director in rehearsal periods. Um, and all 24 buses are being used for any combination of uh, floor monitors, side fill, in-ears, groups, effects ends. This is the Pro 3, which is a really enjoyable console to work on. Um, I hadn't used it before I came in to this theatre. I'd been touring a Pro 2 um, and using the XL8. Um, but the venue had the Pro 3 in here as part of their in-house inventory. Um, and, well, I don't want to have to lift one console to put another one in of the same brand. So I just thought it'd be easy to put a USB stick in. And it all transferred across pretty much 100%. Uh, but it's been a joy. Uh, the beautiful thing is it's all doesn't matter which control surface you're on, it's all the same mic pre's, converters, A to D, uh, sorry, the same clock as well, um, same software, it's just all the I.O. That, that really changes and the control surface itself. So it was really easy just to move across. There was a, a learning curve of learning the, the control surface itself, um, being different to the Pro 2, but it was a pretty short learning curve. Coming in and using the, um, the in-house production with the Pro 3 instead of my Pro 2 meant that they've got their DL351 and DSP racks down on stage already in place. Um, but there was no real option to move that rack to where I need it for the show. So I broke out my DL251 and have put it underneath the drum riser where it usually lives and run the two AES50 cables from that over to the in-house DL351 um, which is setting up the, uh, the Midas network which is you know, a, a function of these bores um, which no real other console can do um, and it's been an absolute lifesaver so what it's meant is you know 38 of the of the inputs are coming from the actual band. So if I wasn't able to set up another I.O. box and I had to use the, the in-house rack, we would have had to have run a whole bunch of drop boxes and copper um, across the stage and around the back and all that sort of thing. But it's just more things to get in the way because the stage crew on stage don't have a huge amount of space. We've got really big props. Um, so there's a lot of traffic back there. So the, the least amount of space that I can take up um, helps those guys. I mean, we're only doing 10 channels of RF and two channels of in-ears. But Spider-Man is literally on the other side of this wall. Um, and they'll be running a huge amount of, of headsets, in-ears. If an issue does come up, I've got two frequencies here that are my backups, so I can move to those um, without affecting anyone else. Um, but if I was to move outside those frequencies, um, we actually have to make a phone call to the production company 
who kind of oversees, they've got a list, a current list that's kept up to date of who's using what, where, um, and you sort of call up and say, look, we're out of frequencies or we're adding two channels, where, where, where can we go? And they'll let you know what, what gear you need to get so you're in the right band and what frequencies are available for your theatre or your area. Um, and it's, it's stuff they've tried doing in Australia, trying to manage frequencies. Um, the JANS or JPJ try to do it um, as best they can at Blues and Roots, but they can't, they can't get the frequencies off the, the visiting engineers because um, they're always going to change anyway. So they, they do a really good job of frequency managing their, their stuff. Um, but here on Broadway, everything, absolutely everything is, is frequency managed and it's really good.